Welcome back to Moby Dick. The last post ended at chapter, what was it, 52? Yeah, I think it was 52. Um, it was the albatross. We had the albatross and its conflicting meanings depending on whether the writer of the postscript was interpreting it or the narrator of the chapter. Chapter 53 is the gam. And I have a confession here. Up until this point, I have been posting my, my blogs as I've been reading each chapter or every couple of chapters, trying to uh, capture the live experience of reading Moby Dick and trying to figure out what it means as it unfolds before me. I broke faith with you. I have finished the book. Uh, since our last post, I have read the remaining... Uh, 400 pages or so, just, just less than 400 pages. And I have to tell you, it's actually better that way. Uh, part of the reason why I chose to do that was because I just got swept up in the narr narrative. But some of it was that in the second half of the book, a great deal of time is spent talking about or trying to describe different aspects of the whale itself or different manners in which one can try to understand the whale. And this has gotten a lot of uh, complaints and criticisms from readers over the years. You know, most famously that this book is a lot of talking about stuff that's totally irrelevant to the action of the book. If you insist on thinking that this book is just a, a fish tale about revenge, then I can see your point and the whole thing can actually be reduced to a comic book. But that is not what Moby Dick is about. I put before you right now that Moby Dick is, as, we've, as we have alluded to before, Moby Dick is a quest to understand the eternal and the immortal. Um, both the godlike, the demon, and the human. And how those things are similar or different. Having finished the book, I can tell you that that is in fact what it is about. And that is why it is so difficult to read and why it contradicts itself, why there is misinformation, why there is humor and tragedy and terror and beauty. And at the end of it, I can tell you, there is no resolution. There isn't, because there can't be. We are trying to find the unknowable, which makes this truly the great American novel. It makes it truly the one subject worth exploring most in life. And it also means that at least on this side of life, we're not going to be able to definitively explain what we mean. Even if we try to, even if Ishmael is actually the real narrator, and even if Ishmael is not crazy or stupid and he does know what he's talking about, it will be impossible for us to understand. Now, I'm not done blogging Moby Dick. I am going to go back through and try to parse out in more understandable terms the last 400 pages of the book. If you've been with me up until now, if you've been reading with me up until now, stick with it. It's worth it. It's one of the most beautiful books ever written. When you come to passages that seem to make no sense or seem to have no bearing whatsoever on the action of the novel, those are exactly the passages you should look at most. Don't worry about piecing it all together in sensible fashion because we're not here for sense. We're trying to find what is true. So keep reading and hang in there. I, I will update more soon.